So now we're going to talk about the very last parametric statistical test uh, for this whole class. It's called multiple regression. And it's like simple regression, um, except for with multiple regression, you have more than one predictor variables predicting one outcome variable. So you could use this when you have multiple predictors of one outcome variable. It's always one outcome variable for a multiple regression. And this dependent variable for multiple regression should be scale, it should be interval or ratio. The predictors don't need to be scale, though. They can be grouping variables or anything like that. So in an example for uh, when you have multiple predictors, would be um, predicting exam grades from hours studying, like we did uh, for simple regression. But now we could also include um, attendance. How many attendance? How many days that you attended lecture? So now we have two variables that are predicting exam grades. Uh, so we'll probably be able to do a better job predicting exam grades because we have more information. Um, we have this additional attendance information, which will probably predict exam grades uh, in ways that our studying didn't, because you'd hopefully learn stuff in lecture as well as um, at home studying. And so uh, here the null hypotheses would be, so there'd be one for the intercept, so that we'd say A is zero. And then there'd be another null hypothesis for the hour of studying, right? The slope for studying is zero. And a null hypothesis for attendance. That the slope for that is zero. So all this would mean is that there's no correlation between hours studying and exam grades, in this case, controlling for attendance. And we'll get into more of what controlling for a variable means uh, in a little bit. Right? And then this one down here, so the null hypothesis is that there's no relationship, the correlation is zero, the, the slope is zero for attendance and exam grades when you're controlling for studying. Um, so this is one context where you would use multiple regression, when you have multiple predictors and you're trying to predict one outcome variable. Statisticians draw um, this uh, relationship where you have multiple predictors uh, predicting one outcome variable like this. So this is one variable and it's predicting the outcome variable and this is another variable predicting the outcome variable. And so in our case, right, we have, uh, we're predicting grades from studying and attendance. So we have studying, predicting, whoop, predicting grades and attendance, predicting grades. All right, so here you have multiple predictors predicting the one outcome variable. So another use that statisticians have for uh, multiple regression is to see if uh, one variable mediates the relationship between two other variables. So I'll say that this use is, to, is for testing mediation. All right, so um, for this, let's go through an example that might, might make it easier. Let's say we already know that studying predicts grades. Because we did a simple regression and there was a statistically significant relationship between the two. Uh, but now we're wondering is, well, is the only re is the reason that studying predicts grades is because studying causes when people the people that study more that that extra studying maybe gets them excited about the topic and so they attend class more, right? And when they're in class, they see the lectures um, and they learn from those lectures, and it's actually that this thing that causes an increase in the grades. So this is how you would draw a mediation relationship. 
where um, studying increases attendance and attendance increases grades. So this would be called the mediator, mediator. And this is the variable that is the ca it's causally between these two. Um, and so like a more plausible example might be drinking caffeine increases alertness and increased alertness causes better detection of, I don't know, hidden pictures in, uh, in an image. Right. So um, statisticians use multiple regression to test for mediation to see if one variable goes between two other variables. And we're not going to get in depth about how that's done uh, in this class, um, but it's a, a common use for uh, multiple regression. And the most common reason that scientists use multiple regression is to control for third variable explanations. Um, and so, for example, let's say we're predicting exam grades and we want to find out if how many hours students spend studying predicts exam grades once you take into account how much they attend class, right? Because students who are more motivated are going to attend class more and they're going to do more homework. So uh, is it really just attending class that increased their exam grades? Right? Or does our studying have an effect above and beyond attendance? That's what we're talking about here for controlling for these third variable explanations. Um, so for the example, we might want to say, uh, does um, studying, our studying uh, predict exam grades uh, controlling for attendance. And the reason this is of the most common use of multiple regression is because scientists are not only interested in describing what variables change together in the world, which ones correlate together in the world, they're actually much more interested in making causal claims about the world. They want to say that studying causes an increase in grades, not merely that they're correlated together, right? Because remember we talked about how correlation doesn't establish causation um, because there, you know, A could cause B, which is your correlation, but it could be the case that B causes uh, A, or perhaps there's a third variable that's causing A and B, and this third variable is the third variable in here, the third variable explanations. And multiple regression allows us to exclude third variable explanations. For a causal claim, um, there's at least three criteria that have to be met. There's various lists of criteria that people have come up with, but some fundamental ones are, first, that the causal variable, uh, studying, has to precede the effect variable in time, right? It doesn't make any sense for something that happened later on to have caused something that happened earlier, right? So that totally makes sense. A has to precede, precede B in time, right? So studying has to come before exam grades for studying to cause exam grades. The two variables have to change together. So if the amount people studies, the, the number of hours people study, is unrelated to their exam grade, then there's nothing to explain anyways. A can't be causing B because people that have more A aren't having more B or, or less B if there's a negative relationship. All right, so these are two criteria for a causal claim that have to fit any particular data set. And the third criteria is there's no third variable explanations. There's no other variables that can explain the correlation between A and B. Um, and the best way to solve this third problem, the best way to address this issue in research, if you can, is to do an experiment. In an experiment, you control all third variables, ideally,
And the only thing that differs between your two groups is the variable of interest. So exam for example, if I want to see if uh, caffeine increases alertness, I could have my participants show up in my lab and I can randomly assign them to decaffeinated coffee and caffeinated coffee and then have them drink that coffee and then measure their alertness. And with that design, all other third variables are controlled for. I mean, some people are naturally going to be more alert than others, but have randomly assigned them to the two different groups. So on average, that third variable is going to be equal. Uh, and that's the beauty of an experiment is it always has that random assignment. And that controls for all of those third variables. You could make a mistake in your research design and have the decaf condition in the morning and the caffeinated condition in the afternoon. Uh, so there you've, you've messed up your study and it's actually not a good experiment because you have, do have a third variable there, the time of day that could explain your results. <clears throat> but if you do it right, all those third variable explanations are gone. So this is, a, 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 experiments are great when you can randomly assign people to different experimental conditions. However, for the current example we're looking at, how much studying people do, it'd be a little bit unethical to say to some people, you guys don't get to study. And then to have other people, um, we tell them, all right, you guys study five hours a week. And then to see, controlling for everything else, um, whose grades are better, right? And so what you can do, um, what researchers do, when there's a variable they can't manipulate, when you can't randomly assign people to those different conditions, they'll measure the other variables, the third variables, and they'll use, put them into a multiple regression and they'll control for those variables. And if you, have, if you have a multiple regression predicting grades with these two things, if studying predicts grades, controlling for attendance, then attendance can't explain the relationship between studying and grades. That's the way multiple regression works, and that's the beauty of it. That's a very powerful um, use for multiple regression. Is it helps allow us to make causal inferences by excluding these third variables as explanations for uh, the relationship of interest in our research.